Today on Oz, under fire for being too skinny. Are you surprised that there's all this attention about your weight? Bethany Frankel responds to her critics. Do I look sick or is there a problem? I mean, honestly, I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, the truth about her weight. I am thin. I have a brand called Skinny Girl. And the stress of divorce in the public eye. We're all just, we're all just doing the best we can. Raw, revealing, emotional. Coming up next on Dr. Oz. She's the most famous Real Housewife. She's in the headlines almost daily. She's the creator of a multi-million dollar brand called Skinny Girl, but she's recently come under fire for being too skinny. Today, Bethany Frankel is revealing all. Please give her a hand from the truth about her weight to the stress of divorce in the public eye and how she's managed to make it through the controversy and bounce back stronger than ever. Please welcome Bethany Frankel. <laughs> You have, so you have wings, I see. I have wings. I can fly. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I must say, every time I open a paper, there's a picture of you. And I'm just going to show some of these to the audience. I know you probably remember these, but these are all headline-provoking pictures. Here's one with you in bikini, different bikinis. Yes. From those to the pajama gate image. Pajama gate. With uh, you and your, <laughs> your four-year-old daughter's outfit. I would have put some makeup on had I, and cleaned up my room had I known that would have been such a big deal. Are you surprised that there's all this attention about your weight and that they just won't go away? I mean, don't most people in the public eye get all this kind of heat? I think, I don't know if I'm surprised by it. I'm surprised by the things that people choose to really focus on. That's what it is. So the pajamas and, yeah, weight is like breastfeeding in that it's one of those fiery topics that the minute someone starts talking about it, people get really crazy about it. People are very invested in how much you weigh and what you eat and she didn't really eat that and it's really amazing the amount of conversation that can surround it. I mean, I've had nutritionists, experts just tell everybody what I must weigh, which mm. is kind of why I got on a scale recently on a show because I just felt like people irresponsibly put things out there and then the world sees it. I mean, I'm standing here with all of you guys. I mean, do I look sick or is there a problem? Like, I mean, honestly, I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, I, you know, I am thin. I have a brand called Skinny Girl, so it's not some big mystery. Why'd you call it Skinny Girl? I called it, I didn't really put that much thought into it. I don't put as much thought as everyone thinks <clears throat> into all these business ideas. I go with my gut instinct. When I saw what the drink was, I said, you know what, that's, that's a skinny girl's margarita. It initially <laughs> had an S on the end. It was just kind of a, 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 a quip, and I intentionally made it one word, not two words, because I really didn't want the focus to be on skinny hmm. girl. It's really more of a lifestyle and an attitude and about feeling confident and carefree and not feeling guilty. And ironically, it's about indulging and not depriving. Because I think we as women beat ourselves up, in particular when it comes to body image and food, and we're trying to figure out all the time what not to have. How do I stay away from that? How do I avoid that? How do I be good tomorrow because I was bad yesterday? And food is not your best friend or your enemy. It is food, and you have to have a good relationship with it. And a skinny girl has a good relationship with it. And I've created this line so people can allow and indulge more on the things that they want to have. So how much weight have you lost, roughly? Probably in the last 20, you know, since 20 years ago, probably 25 pounds. 25 pounds? Yeah. Are you happier now, 25 pounds lighter? Um, sometimes I'm too thin now because I'm also older, and I feel like when you're older, you, your face sh makes you look even older if you're thin. Mm. Um, but it's really the reason, the I ironic reason that I was... 25 pounds heavier, I used to always be on a diet. It had to be steamed, it had to be sweet and low, it had to be fat free. The whole, this whole country is based on fat free and everything being this big but low fat, full of crap and sugar. And it was, that was my way of living. But because I used to always be on a diet, then I would binge. Because you're depriving yourself so much and you have such a bad relationship with food that if you eat one potato chip, which is a forbidden food, you eat 500 of the potato chips and then you say you're going to be good tomorrow. And it wreaks total havoc on your body. I know you know all of this and a lot of you probably know all of this because women are emotional about food. And my first book, Naturally Thin, when I wasn't remotely as successful and famous as I am now, was on the New York Times bestseller list for five months in a row because I unleashed people from the imprisonment of dieting. 
it, 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 it was a state of mind. I never, ever count anything. I never, there's no forbidden food. I eat french fries, I eat, I eat ice cream, I eat everything. I just don't have it all at once. And that book was a toolbox for just living your life on Thanksgiving at a Super Bowl with your friends on a date with a cocktail. There's nothing forbidden. Nothing in small quantities is going to make you fat. It's about the mindset and the emotions. And women are emotional about food. Can I, you mentioned this concept, but please, it's, it's a remarkably compelling argument. You speak about the noise. Food noise. And food noise. Explain that if you don't mind, everybody. Um, well, everybody has a noise in different areas, and some are more noisy. It could be relationships, it could be money. In this particular case, I talk about food noise. Food noise is, I'm fat, I don't look good, I'm not gonna be able to wear those jeans. Oh my God, I can't believe I ate that. I ate that, so I have to eat more of that, because if I keep eating that, then t I'll hate myself, and tomorrow I won't eat anything. It's noise. And a food conversation is, you know what, I'm PMS. I want that chocolate cake more than I want sex money or anything. And I'm gonna have that chocolate cake, but I'm not gonna beat myself up about it. I'm not gonna have the whole entire piece. I'm gonna have a half of it, or as much as I need. I might switch lanes to get myself off my mental issue that I have with chocolate cake, but I want it. That's a, an example of the conversation. Or, you know what, last night I drank with my friends and I ate chips last night, and so t this morning I'm gonna have something healthy. Or at lunch I'm gonna have some salmon with, with salad. It's just a conversation rather than beating ourselves up. We have so many things in our lives that we beat ourselves up about. Well, uh, speaking of noise and things that you can beat yourself up about, there's a very public divorce that you're going through, two and a half years into it. Yes. What toll has that taken on your body? I think it's taken a toll I mean, my hair did get thinner. I wasn't, I wasn't sleeping as much. I could see the black circles in my eyes. I could see in my personality just being a little frayed and more snappy. I can be frenetic anyway and abrasive. And even in watching Housewives, you're sitting in a conversation with someone, but what's going on in your life that's not in that conversation makes you very wound up. Um, I believe what people say about stress being by far the worst thing, worse than anything, worse than probably anything you could put in your body or do to yourself. So how do you cope with the stress? Um, I mean, truthfully, s trying to sleep, snuggling with your pets and your kids, just like love, you know, being around your friends, laughing. Yeah, but at that, at that pre-dawn moment when you wake up and you're all by yourself in bed, what do you tell yourself? Oh, this is my life. I say, uh, this is, I say this is happening for a reason and I don't know what it is yet, but everything that's happened in the past and every struggle I've ever been through in the past, I found out later why it happened. And that's what I say. And I say, you know what? I'm a survivor and it's making me stronger. And this is character building. What I'm going through is making me a stronger person, a better person to write books and help other people with the mistakes that I've made, which is what happened with the food, for example. Let me help other people. If I've gone through something, I have a gift for being able to crystallize how I feel and my emotions and either, and express it. So that's a gift. So pay it forward. Help somebody else. Tell somebody else what not to go through. There are women, even on my show, who are going through divorces. And I'm like, let me just explain to you X. Like, I want to help other people. So this won't be forever. And it's part of my path. It's a spiritual thing, I think. Yet you, you put yourself at risk, for example, going back to the housewives. Yes. I put myself at risk for scrutiny. And I real, you know, I'm now on the show. And I can definitely be rough. And I see people having an opinion and saying things, and I could have just stayed away. I really did miss the connection, and I missed the honesty, and I missed the relationship with the people who were watching. So I just felt that it was right to go back. Let me ask you to do me a favor. This is a picture of you, speaking of yourself, from 10 years ago. Okay. When you were just starting out, just trying to make it. Now you've founded this multi-million dollar company, you've been on the cover of Forbes magazine, I mean, big time business magazines, all the success, all the fame. If you could go back and talk to that version of you from 2005, what would you tell her? I would tell her, you don't need to know what it all is going to be. It doesn't all have to be wrapped up in a perfect box. You don't need to know. And I, but I would tell myself that now. We can't, you, you can't be who you're not in many ways. I would say, really, really enjoy the ride. Like, really enjoy it because the, the thing is, I'm looking at this girl, and her struggles were real then, too. I was living in my apartment. I was broke. I didn't know what was going to happen to me. Am I ever going to meet someone? Am I ever going to have a kid? And I, I would say the same thing I would say to myself now. Don't beat yourself up, but I would still do it.
and take a moment. Right. No, I'm okay. It's just, you know, we're all just, we're all just doing the best we can. You know, we're all just hanging on by a thread a little bit sometimes. And I have an amazing, beautiful daughter and that's changed everything. You know, it's just like, that's the only thing that really matters in all of this. You know, everybody in this room is probably working like a dog, trying to figure it out, stressing out over their credit cards, but it's for their kids. You know, it's like, you just want to give your kids a better life than you had. And it's like all the stress is that she's just never gonna have to worry about it, any of that stuff, you know? I won't allow it. She's gonna have the same worries you have. Yeah, maybe, maybe, no, hopefully no. not. But yeah, everybody, yeah. Yeah, good Lord. Good uh. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> You've been, you're like a relative to everybody here because they've seen you close and up front. Yes. For a decade. I love that you're back in the dating scene. Uh, she's written an absolutely fabulous book. And she says, by the way, that she's absolutely terrible at love. In fact, the book's title is, I suck at relationships so you don't have to. Which I think is, <laughs> what is the biggest relationship lessons you learned through all of this? I think that, um, I think that women in particular don't go with their gut and that we were given a woman's intuition and the beginning of a relationship or meeting someone you have all these signs and you have these feelings, you have a gut reaction that you'll never get again because you get clouded with, with what other people say. Oh, he's so amazing, we love him, he's a doctor, he's a doctor. Uh, he's rich. It's not my fault. He's, he's, he's rich or he loves you so much, you're not gonna find somebody else like that. And I think that the noise gets involved rather than just going with your gut. I think we use our head and our heart and we don't just say, you know what, this isn't right. I feel something that feels off, that's my gut. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm cutting my losses. And that's the truth, which the truth sometimes hurts. And it doesn't have to be at the beginning of a relationship. You can be later in a relationship and you just know something's off and you gotta, you gotta be true to your gut. I love the list you put in here, the checklist to Thank make you. sure you're flying safely in love. I adore your being open today. Thank you. This Thank is you. a wonderful book. We're gonna Thank have you. all kinds of insights on it on DrOz.com. But check the book out because it's worth the investment. Thank you. You can also watch Bethany answer our Oz 5 questions exclusively on DrOz.com. We'll be right back. Thank you. Coming up, they're like one of the family, and you want the best for them. But the food we're feeding our pets may not be made of what you think. What are these ingredients, and are they really safe? We're setting the record straight. Is your dog food dangerous? Coming up. All new odds. If you want a banging body like Beyonce, listen to this guy. Which is Beyonce's favorite of these? The 22-day revolution to get your body beach ready. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. More than 161 million of you are pet owners. And if you're anything like me, your dog is a member of the family. But... Recent headlines are sparking fears about the food we are feeding our pets. Take a look. You've seen the headlines. You've heard the news. A popular dog food made right here in the metro area is named in a class action lawsuit accused of killing thousands of pets. Dog owners across the country are in a panic over alarming reports that a popular brand of dry dog food may be poisoning their pets. The class action lawsuit filed in February alleges that thousands of dogs have been severely sickened, many suffering agonizing deaths from the food. The dog food contains propylene glycol, an FDA-approved additive that is also used as antifreeze, which the suit alleges may be poisoning the pets. Also at issue, the possibility the dog food contains mycotoxins, poisons that are produced by fungus that grows on grains. Today, what you need to know to protect your pet from dangerous foods. So which foods are safe to feed our pets? Veterinarian Dr. Heather Lenzer is here to set the record straight. Mm -hmm. So I hear all these words, propylene glycol, mycotoxins, these are all good poisons, contaminants. I mean, how do you make sense of this? What are the real things you should be worried about? Well, let's do propylene glycol first. So first, it's an additive, and it's an actually additive in all the foods that we have right in front of us. Its job is to help preserve moisture in food. Mm -hmm. But in the, in the amounts that are in this type of food and our dog's food, it's considered by the FDA to be safe. So although we see it on the label, it's not something to be concerned about. 
What about mycotoxins? Now that's completely different. Now mycotoxins are found in grains that are moldy. So either grains that have gotten too wet during the storage process or the harvesting process. And what can happen with that is if your dog accidentally eats some, these mycotoxins can cause liver, liver damage and even can cause some cancers. So if I look at the label of mm -hmm. the pet food that I get Rosie, my dog, Am I going to be able to tell if they have, for example, mycotoxins in there? It's not, it's not like it's going to say that on there. It's not like uh, you know, it's going to say contaminated with mycotoxins or salmonella or E. coli. You will get some good information, though. You'll understand how much to feed Rosie, what the true ingredients are. But as for actual safety, there's not necessarily anything you can do when it comes to reading to know for sure. So things like mold, which I understand now are, are natural contaminants, are the pet food companies doing enough, you think, to get this out of the food supply? Some people think they are, and some people think they aren't. So the, the Pet food companies have to report any sign of contamination to the FDA within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. But there's some people that think that that's not working very well. So there's actually two uh, U.S. senators that wrote letters to the FDA just recently mm -hmm. asking the FDA to up their game when it comes to monitoring for, for different contaminants. So in the meantime, let me put you through the, the mill here. I've got some sure. questions from audience members. Eliza's joining us. She has Oscar, her dog. Hi. Hi. How old is Oscar? Hi. Hey, Oscar. Um, Oscar is eight years old. I've had him since he was a puppy. He's like, he's my baby. He means everything to me. So I want to make sure that everything I'm doing is, you know, the right thing to protect him, to make sure he's healthy and taken care of. Absolutely. So, so if there's one thing we can do to be extra cautious yep. with our pets, what would it be with the food? Now, this is a little controversial in the pet world, but it's not controversial in the, in the mainstream veterinary medicine. And that is not feeding raw meat to our pets. And the main reason is this meat can be contaminated, not because there's anything wrong with it per se, but we could have salmonella, E. coli, and other different kinds of bacteria in this that not only can make the dog sick, but we can get sick too. Immunocompromised people, very young and very old people are at risk for, for picking up bacteria in that way. So if you're gonna use packaged foods, mm -hmm. how should we preserve them so we avoid those mycotoxins you spoke about earlier? Well, the big thing is making sure we don't accidentally create mold, because again, it's the mold that creates the toxin. Mm -hmm. So you wanna store your food in a clean, dry Here, place. Come, come how do you store your food, by the way? Um, I mostly store it in, you know, in a container on the ground by where I feed him, and I use a little scooper to, to you know, dole it out. So this would, you'd open this thing up regularly? Yeah. Leave it on the ground, you fold it over or something? Yeah, with a clip. With a clip? Yeah. All right, so I actually don't do that. I take it out of the bag and I pour it into a container. Right. Now what should we both be doing? Well, ideally you keep the, you keep the food inside the container and drop it in an airtight bag. And the main reason to keep it in the, bowl, in, the, in the bag is there's actually some protective coatings in that bag to help preserve freshness. Is that helpful? Right. Super helpful. We, we both learned, we <laughs> yeah, both exactly. learned. Yeah, right, exactly. Let me go to some pet owners in the audience coming over. Sure. That they lends you with us. Mm -hmm. So here, here's our, our first victim. Who's the, <laughs> what's the name of this attack dog? This is Nika, my rescue. Oh, you did? Nico. What's your first name? Denise. Hey, stand up, Denise. So what do you have to say? <laughs> Nico did have a question about pet food. <laughs> What's the question? He was wondering if it's um, beneficial to make our own as opposed to buying. So you're saying not to buy, not to feed them raw food. What about right. making our own food for our pets? It's really tempting because, especially for people, it's really much more healthier for us if we make our own food. But it can be really hard to formulate a homemade dog food yourself without guidance from a, your veterinarian or a veterinary nutritionist. What can end up happening is you could accidentally over or under supplement in areas like calcium and uh, vitamin D and phosphorus, and your protein and fat ratios might be off as well. Dr. Langer was just spanking me about feeding Rosie off the table. Not literally. <laughs> yes. Yes. Metaphorically. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have one. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good. My yes. name's Jillian. Hi, Jillian. And what's your dog's name? This is Odie. Right. What's Odie's question? Take it away, Odie. Um, <laughs> well, I just wanted to know, what are some things that I could look for to see if he's having a bad reaction to the food? It's a great question. The first is gastrointestinal, so stomach and intestine signs, vomiting and diarrhea. Mm -hmm. And that can be with or without blood. The next is drinking more and urinating more. And the last would be a lot of excess weight gain or weight loss. So I think you. general rule of thumb for everybody is keep an eye on the behavior of your dogs, just like us. When we don't feel well, we go see a doc. Same thing for the best. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. We'll be right back. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Does the thought of eating vegetables turn you green? What if spinach tasted like ice cream or string beans were like fries? We're changing the way you think about eating vegetables. Tried and true techniques for making your greens taste like you're eating a treat. Next. When you hear green vegetables, you don't usually think treat. Kids, am I right? 
Yeah, they're frowns. They don't like that. Megan, Dylan, and Ayana are here. They're self-proclaimed picky eaters who say they hate, I mean hate, green vegetables of the day. America's Test Kitchen is here with tried and true techniques for making your greens taste like a treat. Kids, I want honest opinion. Can this be done? No. 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 Kids, they know. They usually know. We're going to find out today. I've got some treats for all of you. I'm not going to tell you what's in them. I want you to taste each of these right now before I tell you because you won't otherwise. And then I'm going to go over here and talk to Julia Collin Davison about you guys. Start eating. Start eating. She has perfected literally thousands of recipes in America's Test Kitchen. We'll jump right in with the one that I promised to the kids over there. Mm. We're going to teach them how you can make spinach taste like ice cream. I know. It now, sounds funny, doesn't it? Yeah, like impossible. <laughs> it works really well. Basically, you're making a smoothie. And we tried all sorts of bases, but we found a base of milk and orange juice is the right combination. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to add a whole banana and a whole apple. And you can leave the peel on the apple because there's a lot of good fiber and vitamins in the peel. And you're going to blend it all up with some ice, a little sweetener. We're going to natural sweeteners. We tried honey, but it made a honey smoothie. That's pure maple syrup. Just a tablespoon or so in the smoothie. You blend it all up. It looks like this. If you use frozen bananas and a frozen, um, uh, lots of ice, obviously, yeah. you can get a nice firm texture like the ice cream, or you could have it be a little looser. Oh my goodness. Isn't that amazing? Oh, don't, don't listen to me. Ayana, what do you, th oh, you should have fourth bites in her mouth now. <laughs> to answer the question. What do you think, dear? I think it was really good. And I really liked it. So was I okay on this one? <laughs> Kids agree? Megan, everyone's on board? Dylan? Oh, look, mischievous. Dylan finishes already. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, hiding behind the green tree. <laughs> All right, next up. I know kids like French fries, uh -huh. but unfortunately, it's one of the top foods for putting weight on. It's not very good for you for a lot yep. of other reasons. So we're making green beans that taste like French fries. How is it even possible? <laughs> we're going to roast them. And I think when people think about green beans, they steam them. But roasting really brings out the browning, makes them a little crisp. And what happens is that it's like anti-aging for beans because the starches, when they go into the oven, they turn into sugars, which makes them taste a bit sweeter. All you got to do is a pound of beans, one tablespoon of olive oil, some salt and pepper on a foil lined sheet, 450, about 20 minutes. So fast and simple. So fast. Dylan, this is your turn. What do you think? It's really good. Like, good enough that you might actually ask for it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, easy to please. I thought they were going to be tough customers. They are tough customers. You're just pleasing them. <laughs> All right. And finally, wait for it, everybody. Wait for it. We are making Brussels sprouts that taste as good as candy. <laughs> now, kids, I actually put your Brussels sprouts in a candy bowl on purpose. Think of them as little candy things in there. Go, go, go at them. Let me see what you guys think. Walk <laughs> us through this. How do you make them so sweet and delicious? Yeah, so we're going to use a brown and braise method. And this is good for really tough vegetables like Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli. You put a little butter in there and you get them nice and brown. And then you add some liquid and you put the lid on the skillet and they steam through. Take the lid off. And then you can finish it with a little butter. And there's only half a tablespoon of butter per person here, so don't worry about the butter. Finish it with a little maple syrup. All right, Megan, now, you know, presentation is a lot of this. As I mentioned, I put this in special bowls for you guys. What do you think about these Brussels sprouts? They're very, they're very yummy. Like candy, likely yummy? Yeah. So, Dylan, which of these are you going to ask your mother to make for you tonight? The fries. The fries? He says, Gilly. I asked, what was your favorite one, dear? The ice cream. Like the ice cream? My favorite one was these. I don't know how you made these. You guys like these, too? Just okay or not? They're, they're good. They're good. And their eyes tell you the story. These are really good. I want to thank you very much for making these. You can find all these recipes at DrOz.com. And for more of America's Test Kitchen recipes to make vegetables taste like treats, you can check out their new book, The Complete Vegetarian Cookbook. Be right back. Next, do you have health questions you're too embarrassed to ask your doctor? Are you Googling for answers and treatments instead? From spider veins to bikini lines, the most common questions get asked online. Fixes to your most mortifying skin problems. Next. All new Oz. If you want a banging body like Beyonce, listen to this guy. Which is Beyonce's favorite of these? The 22-day revolution to get your body beach ready. Plus. Best friends behaving badly. Nasty habits. I'm guilty. Everyone should know about. That's coming up tomorrow on Dr. Oz. Stories trending on Google right now reports that pop sensation Taylor Swift insured her legs for $40 million. Big number, didn't it? 
So that got me thinking, what beauty questions are you asking Google? So today I've got the mortifying skin problems you only tell Google and how to fix them. And I've even invited three skin experts to help us out. The first expert is dermatologist, Dr. Ellen Marmot, friend of the show. Why do you think people are so embarrassed? They won't tell their doctors what they'll ask Google questions about their skin. Well, doctors are so intimidating, for sure. There's yes. the white coat syndrome. <laughs> and also the skin is so personal, so people don't want to come in and say, you know, I've got this weird rash or something. So they're they're more likely just to go to the internet and Google it. The problem is when you Google something, you're troubleshooting something and you're guessing your own diagnosis. So you may be getting information that's not best for you. So we're gonna help out today. Before the show, I asked you to Google your most mortifying skin problems and my expert panel has been scrolling through them, all of them. So what is the first Google entry, Dr. Murmur, that you chose? So the first Google entry was red bumpy rash in the bikini line. Ooh, how to treat bumpy red irritated bikini lines. Who Googled that audience? Oh, there she is, come on down. Welcome to the show. Hi okay. there. What's Hi your there. first name? Denise. Denise, is this a common problem or are you asking for a friend? <laughs> um, no, 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 I'm asking for me. Um, I basically had this problem um, my whole adult life. Ever since I started shaving or waxing or using hair removal creams, um, I get these red, itchy, rashy bumps, and it's very embarrassing. Frustrating. You haven't talked to your doctor about it, huh? No. <laughs> no that no. doesn't come up in conversation. No, no, it doesn't. All definitely right. not. Well, how have you treated it? Um, after I come out of the shower, I'll try to use a hand or a body lotion, but some of them contain alcohol, and then Ooh, it burns stinks. and just makes it worse. I don't so, know what Dr. to do. So, Dr. Murmur, you're very good at this. Is this from personal experience, or you just like, dealt with patients in this category? You no, know, I'm a dermatologist. You <laughs> should ask your doctor any question you have. Never, ever be embarrassed is my take-home message for today. But one thing you can do the night before is actually put on baby oil in the area, and this will soften the hair follicle, and it'll soften your skin as well, so it'll be less traumatic when you shave. Studies show that 36% of what you remove when you shave is actually the skin, and that's why it's You're so traumatic. You're kidding me, a third of it? A third of My what you remove. My face is gonna get skinny. <laughs> it's gonna get thin. It looks pretty good. <laughs> okay, and so what you can do is then, when you do get in the shower, after about 10 minutes of warm water, which will also soften your hair follicle, you can apply a moisturizing shave gel or even a moisturizing body wash to the area. Then you should use a very fresh razor because the sharper the razor, the less traumatic it is for the hair. And shave the hair in the, in the direction of the hair, if you can. When you get out, do put on an alcohol-free body lotion. This will also condition the skin. And then about twice a week, you can exfoliate the area. This gets rid of sort of dead skin in the area around the hair follicles and prevents the trapped hairs that create ingrown hairs. If you do get the painful bump or the ingrown hair, use a warm washcloth as a warm compress. 10 minutes, twice a day, and that should take care of it. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Okay. So straightforward stuff here. Yeah. It's a little gift from the show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much. So our next skin expert is celebrity makeup artist Cindy Watson, who's got a Google question. Which one caught your eye? How to cover spider veins on the back of your legs. Spider veins. Yes, very. It's, it's something I hear all the time because we want to show our legs. Sure. And, you know, spring is coming. You want to show your legs. And so you want to cover it. You want to make sure they look perfect. And if you think they're normal, and they are actually in many ways, but you can cover them. So, audience, who Googled this problem? Where is she? Oh, oh, very shyly admits to it. Come on up. Come on up. Just imagine if whenever you Google something, you're dragged up on the show here. How many things you would not Google? So if you don't, could you, what's your first name? Denise. Denise, would you mind showing off your beautiful legs? Uh, pick here, a leg. Come, come on over there. <laughs> Stand right leg. over here, let me see. <laughs> oh yes, so yeah, they're small little veins. You can all see them here. There are a few on both sides actually, pretty typical. They're varicose veins, but they're just yeah. small, they're baby varicose veins, so to speak, like tree branches. They have short, jagged little lines. I think those are pretty typical. Yeah. Can you see that one pretty, if you look there, there. And they're caused by sitting for long periods of time, by the way. One of the reasons I want you guys walk. Now the audience is walking around. So, how much do you sit during the day? I'm notorious for sitting. Matter of fact, I sit until one leg gets cramped, and then I switch the leg over <laughs> to the next leg. Cross eagle legs. All right, makeup artist. Okay. So you take it away. So what you want to do is you see that she has a big patch right here. You want to make sure you see that they're kind of blue. You might be blue or they might be green. You want to make sure you cover that first. So I'm taking something that has a little bit of peachy pink tone to it. Mm -hmm and you want to neutralize that first. You see how that's disappearing really quickly? Yeah. That disappears. And then right on top of it, you put her flesh tone. You do with a lot of celebrities. Are there celebrities that have to hide their veins Oh, like this? all the time. Bruises, veins, they have to, you know, hide everything. They're just like us. Very so good. that's how you do it. So what do you think? You think to take a peek back there. Oh, it looks great. It's not I'm bad, is it? it? You see it? Yep. So it's two different colors. Two Match different one colors. to the vein, one to the skin, and then seal it in with the clear with stuff. With a, a translucent powder. Thank you very much. I hope that's Thank helpful. You. All right.
Our last Google search is what I hear from so many of you. It's how to get rid of your sagging turkey neck. Reality star beauty specialist Jennifer Williams is joining us. She's our final skin expert here to tackle the turkey neck. How are you? Hi, how are so why you? were you so drawn to this mortifying problem? Well, one, I'm always looking down at my phone, so I'm a little nervous that I'm going to get tech neck. Making it worse? <laughs> yes. Who, who Googled this question? Seriously. There, there she is. Come on up, man. I like this. I like capturing these, these questions. <laughs> Right. A great what, question. What's your first name? Anne. Anne. Okay. So do you tech? You, you have a tech neck scenario. Are you always down like this all the time? Yes. Yes, I am. And uh, I work at my desk. I'm in front of students a lot, so um, <laughs> I can feel it sometimes. I'm like, ugh. How many of you audience can relate to this image? There you are. See, by the time you lean way over to really see that email or text, that's 60 pounds of weight you're putting on your neck, which makes it sore. But imagine what you're doing to the skin around it. So Jennifer. Help Ann and everyone else out there. How are we going to deal with this tech neck stuff? This okay, goblin listen. neck. I'm definitely not a big fan of plastic surgery. There's so many easy and affordable things that you can do at home okay. for a tech neck, a saggy neck. One thing is we always moisturize our face, right? We want to keep our face beautiful, but we tend to forget about our neck. There are special creams, neck creams for our neck that firm and uphold your neck. So that's simple. Just may, pick one up I? at your yes. pharmacy. Ah, I've always wanted to do this. <laughs> You paint pictures here. Oh, go up straight. You go up, right, up or down? Like this? Does it make a difference? Um, doctor. Doctor Marmar, does, does it make a difference? Definitely up. Definitely up? up. Ah. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, we want to do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, and honey, listen. Okay. A bronzer is a girl's best friend, okay? okay. You want to take the bronzer, you want to match it to your arm, because that will match your neck. So what you want to do right, is... The, the, the arm matches the neck? Yes. You're kidding me. That's the warmest me. part of your body. You my should neck, know that, Dr. I, 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 my neck is always <laughs> paler than my arm. I never realized that. Well, she doesn't the look top like of she your tans. Arm or the yeah. No, the top. The top. Well, yeah, maybe. She doesn't yeah. look like she tans yeah. too much. So we just have to make sure there's some pink tones in the bronzer. And I'm going to do this so I don't mess up your beautiful blouse. But you want to bronze the whole neck, not just the sagging part. You're going to start here in the middle of the neck, and you're going to go around the neck. And one thing you want to make sure is that the bronzer does not have too much shimmer. You don't want to have your neck going around shimmering. <laughs> you just want to match it. Let me see that. Take it up by the ear. I like that. Yeah. Makes a difference. Yeah, look at the camera right there. You see yourself. Yeah. Voila! Nicely done. She's gorgeous. Thanks to all my guests. <laughs> my best. Thanks to my experts. We'll be right back. Tell us, what's your favorite dry skin home remedy? I love cocoa butter. I put some on my face every morning and night. It really does a trick, and I truly believe it will fight wrinkles. I swear by it. Share your remedy on Facebook.com slash Dr. Oz. Next, want to make a change in your fight against fat? Everyday habits may be the cause, and you don't even know it. Avoid the common mistakes that may be preventing you from losing weight. The five surprising things keeping you fat that you can change today. Coming up next. Make a change right now in your fight against fat. I'm revealing how to avoid the fat five, the surprising things you never knew were keeping you fat. I sent some of my viewers on a fat five hunt to see if they could guess what was keeping them fat. We're gonna start with Victoria. I asked her to take a home video of how she actually serves her meals. Hi, Dr. Oz, my name is Victoria. Welcome to my kitchen. Come join me for dinner. I made some Oz approved family style dinner. This is my chicken. Crock pot chicken salsa with a big salad and some cilantro rice. I like to serve my family family style. Bon appetit. Victoria is joining us. Very few children, by the way. Thank you. you. Have, do you have two boys? Three. Three. Where's the third one? My husband was holding him, I think. Oh, Todd, he's younger. <laughs> so after seeing that video, what do you think the mistake was? And I'll give you a hint. It's not the food. The plate size, maybe? I don't know if the plates are... Too big, maybe, or? The plates were okay, from what I could tell, but there was a bigger problem. Audience, you guys know what it is? Not the serving size, it's interesting. It's how you serve this, putting the serving dishes on the table. Mm. Let's circle it there. See the serving, see those dishes right there? Now here's the problem. Research shows that when you put the food on the table, people eat more of it, because it's mm -hmm. right there. The solution is to just dish your, you know, serve your plates, dish everything at the stovetop, bring it to the table, 
And it turns out 19% less foods used. You know why? You gotta get up and walk back to get it. Yeah. So the distance is a barrier and the time is a barrier. You give yourself a little bit of effort uh, to, to do something and you won't do it. Yeah. So you naturally eat less. All right, Del, we're not finished with you though. There's okay. one other mistake that we noticed in your house. It's a surprising habit a lot of us have. We took a picture of your thermostat. Mm -hmm. This is it, right? Does that look familiar? That's it. So you're an early ride. Oh, it's the evening, 6.36, so yep. kids are all home eating. Yep. Your thermostat's set at 65 degrees. That's not a good thing, I guess? Well, it's interesting. It turns out that when the temperature in the room is cold, your body gets cold. Mm -hmm. When your body gets cold, and it's good for burning calories, that's a yep. good thing, but your body wants to warm itself up again. That's why it's burning calories. So it's gonna force you to overeat. Oh. So you wanna be careful about that. Colder the temperature, the more food goes in your mouth. So what you want to do is warm your body up. Keep it above, let's say, 66 degrees. Now, if you don't want to change the temperature in the house, then what you can do is have a hot soup. Mm. It warms your body up yeah. so you won't feel the hunger. Actually, soup is very filling, so you won't eat quite as much. Perfect. Okay? I'll do that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank Good you. Luck you. Next, everybody in the audience has the next fat five item. Get your purses out if you guys. Let me see your purses. Put them out, put them out. Don't be bashful. Purses, purses. Get the purses out. Here, I'll pull you. I'm gonna be like that. You know, you go to the stadiums, they look in there. Let me just go on. Let's see what you got in here. All right, you got it. This is a very, this is a, a well dressed woman. She's a lint roller in there. <laughs> hold that. Um, well, you got cream. I'm ha happy hand cream. Very sexy glasses, by the way. Thank you. May I try them on? <laughs> go ahead. What do you guys think? You like yeah. that one? Right. But the culprit I see right here, like I would in everybody, it's your phone. Mm -hmm. It's your phone. Do you use this phone a lot? I use my phone all the time. Here, hop up with me. I'm going to talk a little bit about your phone. Everyone has a phone, right? Yeah. yeah. Just about everybody in the world does right now. But here's the thing. There's a lot of good research on this. Using a, a smartphone is the new couch potato. You know, you're unfortunately on this phone using it about five hours a day, which is what the average person does. You're tweeting, you're texting, you're posting, you're shopping, and you're doing it mostly by sitting around in a sedentary position. So you're basically becoming a couch potato because of this. All those things would have required you to get up and move around. What do you do normally when you're on the phone? Um, I'm texting my kid. I'm taking selfies. Yeah. Um, talking to my mom. Talking to mom. That's a good thing. Well, we just, you know, that's a valuable thing to do. Social media. All valuable. All those things that I have no problems with is how you do it. Give me, show me how, give, sit in the chair for a second. How do you normally position yourself when you're doing it? Just in a nice, comfortable position like that. Right. Rarely do you do it standing, probably. <laughs> Deep in thought. From now on, when you're using that phone, I want you to stand. We can all do this. If you just stand when using your smartphone, you're gonna burn about 50 calories extra when you're doing it for that, let's say you do stand for an hour. That's about five pounds a year just from standing for an hour using your, using your phone. Wow. Listen, it's five hours on a, on a smartphone, it's another four hours watching television, it's nine hours we're not doing anything. So it's worth making a little effort. At least this you can change. The little calisthenics right. with the phone. All right, right, thank you. The next fat five item is hiding in your fridge. Take a look. Hi, Dr. Oz, Ashley Koff here. The surprising thing in your refrigerator that may be making you fat, it's actually skim milk. It's a fat five drink I bet you never considered. Fat helps to curb your hunger and prevent blood sugar spikes. So you actually want the fat in your milk. I know it may sound counterintuitive, but research has actually shown that higher fat dairy is associated with a lower risk of obesity. When you remove the fat from the dairy, you're actually changing the hormone profile. So skim milk may actually be contributing to belly fat. So when it comes to your milk, the best choice is full fat, organic, and drink less of it. All right, four down, one more to go. The last fat five item is found in your bedroom, and Jessica's here. I asked her to take a picture before she goes to sleep. This is what she was honorably willing to share with me. That's pretty cool. I like the mask, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> So why'd you pick those pajamas to sleep in? Because they're comfy, they're stretchy, they pack me in nice and tight like I'm a little pig in a blanket. <laughs> I like to be comfortable. What's the material? Uh, spandex, definitely S spandex. spandex. Yes. So the, the last Fat Five item is actually those pajamas. When they're too tight, they're a problem for me. A couple of reasons, your PJs when they're but as you described, making a little pig in a blanket, is that what you're describing? Yeah, when you feel that fabric, it doesn't really breathe so much, some of it's spandex. Satins, unfortunately, don't breathe that much either. It actually raises your body temperature. Remember, we want a cool body temperature uh, sometimes, uh, and a hot sometimes. When you're eating food, you want to be a little warmer. When you're going to sleep, you want to be a little cooler. And so when you eat, dress yourself up like that, especially with the mask, you seem can't breathe at all, <laughs> and it's crying out. And the thing is, the coolness of the body allows you to release melatonin. 
And melatonin is important for that deep sleep that we need so valuable for you, but it actually helps you fight the fat. Hmm. So loose pajamas, I suggest, I suggest cotton as a material. Cotton. So you're not wrapped up quite nice, but it's still very comfortable, very elegant. <laughs> could you retrieve that a shot? I could do that. I like that outfit. Thank Good you stuff. very much. Learn more about the surprising things making you fat on DrRoz.com. I'll be right back. All new Oz. If you want a banging body like Beyonce, listen to this guy. Which is uh, Beyonce's favorite of these? The 22-day revolution to get your body beach ready. Plus, best friends behaving badly, caught on camera. Nasty habits no one should know about. I'm guilty. I have gone maybe a couple of weeks without washing it. But we're going there. I can't believe that you would do this to me. <laughs> All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. that went viral and helps redefine the true meaning of family. NASCAR driver Brian Scott shared wedding vows, not with his future wife, but with his future stepdaughter. It has over six million views on YouTube and has clearly touched a nation. Take a look. Brielle, can I tell you something? I promise to always hold your hand and skip with you down the street and bring comfort to your life. I vow to make you say your prayers before you eat. I promise to read you stories at night, to always tuck you in real tight. I vow to show you how a man should treat a woman in my relationship with your mother. And above all else, I vow to protect you, care for you, and love you forever. Now there's a good man. Now it's time for In Case You Missed It. First, I ask Oz Nation to Google your most mortifying skin problems, and this was the most popular question. How to treat bumpy, itchy, red, and irritated bikini line? Well, when you shave, it's summer after all, when you shave, you also remove some skin, which causes redness and irritation. You all ex experience that. But when the hair regrows, it can curl under the skin, becoming trapped and causing bumps. So, you gotta get your skin supple before you shave. Here's how you can do that. Apply baby oil the night before you shave. Then take a warm shower for at least 10 minutes before you actually do the shaving. Use a moisturizing shave gel as you do that, and then put some lotion on it afterwards. And that's how you're gonna avoid some of that red itchiness around the bikini line. Next, here's one surprising thing that's keeping you fat. It has nothing to do with what you eat. What is your thermostat set at? Now, did you know that a cold room temperature is great for burning calories, but it might not be so smart during the actual meals? Here's the theory why. When it's too cold, our body temperature drops and we tend to overeat to help us warm up. So you wanna keep your body warm when you eat, keep the room temperature about 66 degrees. And if you like the house cold, well then defrost your body with a cup of soup before you indulge in the rest of your meal. Finally, please be careful of dubious people online that make it seem like I'm endorsing their products because I don't. To see a full list of our trusted sponsors and partners, you can go to DrOz.com and I'll see you next time. <laughs>